Hi. As we continue the Good News video course on the joy of love, we're going to now go into chapter 6, which is about some pastoral perspectives. And we're going to run through this chapter just touching on highlighting the ways that Pope Francis, as a result of the Synod of Bishops on marriage and family life, the ways that Pope Francis is calling the church to make a difference, calling the church to improve how it ministers to and helps marriage and family life. And because we are all part of that church, I'm also going to be sharing some thoughts on how we fit into that. In the middle of paragraph 200, the church wishes, Pope Francis says, with humility and compassion to reach out to families and to help each family to discover the best way to overcome any obstacles it encounters. How well has your parish helped families discover the best way to overcome the obstacles of family life? This is an examination of conscience for all of us. This is not a time of saying, oh, that church, that pastor, that ministry should have done better. This is a time of, in humility, looking at, yes, what could have been done better and what we can learn from that to do it better. Okay, in paragraph 202, he says that the main contribution to the pastoral care of families is offered by the parish, which is the family of families. So it's not just the pastor. It's not just the engaged ministry or the marriage ministry or the baptismal ministry. We are all part of that parish. The parish, as Pope Francis says, is the family of families. And he goes on a little bit further down in 202. It, became, it has become clear that ordained ministers often lack the training needed to deal with the complex problems currently facing families. Now, isn't that a reality? He goes on in paragraph 203 to say that seminarians should receive a more extensive interdisciplinary and not merely doctrinal formation in the areas of engagement and marriage. Some seminarians, he points out, come from troubled families with absent parents and a lack of emotional stability. And this, he says, needs to be dealt with. It's helpful for seminarians to combine time in the seminary with time spent in parishes. There, in the parishes, they can have greater contact with the concrete realities of family life. When a seminarian comes to your parish, all it takes is to invite them to something where we get to know them on a social basis. Now that's something everybody can do. Even if you think your family is too troubled to invite somebody over, such as a seminarian, that's exactly the kind of family that that seminarian needs to see, isn't it? Because there he encounters the obstacles that you're facing and he can take that back to seminary with him or to his spiritual director and talk about how he can be a better minister to families when he's a priest. In paragraph 204, Pope Francis talks about the need for training lay leaders who can assist in the pastoral care of families and with the help, now listen to this, with the help of teachers and counselors family and community physicians, social workers, juvenile and family advocates, and drawing upon the contributions of psychology, sociology, marital therapy, and counseling. Lay leaders in the parish need to draw on these. Lay ministers, if you're involved, for example, in the baptismal preparation program, you too should be given the opportunity to connect up with these professionals to help you better understand what these other families are encountering. 
that you are ministering to. But I want to turn this around the other way. If you who are watching this video are a teacher or a counselor or a physician or a social worker or a juvenile or family advocate, if you have expertise in psychology or sociology or marital therapy or counseling, you have something to offer. You have a responsibility to make it available, be a brain that somebody can pick, that your pastor can pick, or that the team of the baptismal preparation program can pick, or the, the couples, the engaged couples maybe can pick. Become available. What expertise do you have from the experiences you've had? Maybe as a divorced person, maybe as someone who's gone through an annulment, what do you have, and it's more than you realize, that can help other couples? This is a concrete way you can make a difference.